Last week on The Truth, we began our farewell to Rivers Run. We've had some great times there, so we relive some of our favorite hunts and memories these past 12 years. Join us this week as we say so long to this very special place in the Mississippi Delta. Thank you. Primo's Truth About Hunting is brought to you by Bushnell, Savage, Federal, Matthews Archery, Rage, Mossy Oak, Squincher, Polaris, and Primo's Honey, Speak the Language. Hey, how about that big deer Troy killed the week after we killed that deer at Jeremiah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was Andy he Bell was going, too. He, he's going to kill, go kill a doe. We duck hunted that morning, had a great hunt, and he was going to go to uh, to Annabelle. And uh, I said, there's a big deer over there. He said, I ain't going to shoot him. If that deer comes out and you don't shoot him, it's going to be me and you. He shot him. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't take too much convincing. Yeah, of course, don't, no, when he walks out there, it don't take much convincing. Oh, Louisiana boy, he'd have, he'd have rethought that anyway when that oh, big doe yeah. stepped oh, out. Oh, yeah. And our old friend John Polis video. Yeah, Troy. that was John. I think, it, wasn't that John's Maiden first? Maiden Voyage or his something. His first yeah. deer to video. This is a food plot we call an Annie Bell plot. This is Wilbur's favorite plot. He named it after um, his dog, him and Miss Mary. It, it's got to be the best biologic plot that I've seen in a long time. And the deer are wearing it out. And plus, this is, a, this is a trial run for old John. He did awesome duck hunting this morning. Little does he know, he loves a duck and deer hunt. We're trying to teach him how to run the camera. He wants to be a part of what we do, so. Little does he notice if he learns how to run this camera, his duck and deer hunting's over with.
just stuck right there eating acorns. He heard us calling and when he got out here he didn't see another deer. He just kind of started eating. Meh, meh. Got him, dog. Yes, Tears me up every time. Whew. I've got red lights. I've got yellow lights. <laughs> I've got low light. <laughs> well, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We watched that deer for 20 minutes. Called him in with the buck where we were sitting here, and at five o'clock, John said, John said, it's, it's the magic hour. I said, okay. So I buck roared, buck roared, buck roared. And Sitting here, and all of a sudden, I see this deer coming straight to us. There he is. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, brother. Thank you, buddy. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, Thank you, Eric. Hey. Thank Good you, job, buddy. Good job, buddy. Good job, man. What a beautiful deer, man. This is just as much your deer, too, Joe. This is John Post. This is his maiden boys behind the camera. And uh, Troy, he's got something to tell you. He didn't hit record. I know. No. no. <laughs> Guess what? Was the red light supposed to be on inside? Guess the what? Camera? Will I checked? <laughs> Trust me, I checked. This segment of the truth is brought to you by Height Spot Quivers, Black Gold, and Rip Cord. Paul Corn has killed some deer here. He's been here, coming here for years. Yeah, well, that two, let's see, no, last year he shot that real nice deer with his bow right before Christmas. Mm -hmm. 160 inch deer. I think Zach videoed it. It come right through the big hard woods, just looking for them does, cruising, doing what they do. Yeah. And I relived my 30, 30 days. And I had sold it when I was a kid. So I went and bought <laughs> me a Winchester Model 94. Yeah. And shot it, got it open sights and went and killed some deer with it. That was fun. And, and then we killed some great deer with 45 70 with the old buffalo guns with the old long vintage scopes on it. That was that was a blast. Well, that year you hurt your foot. You shot one or two bucks that year with that yep. gun. And you know what? I killed. I did my better that year than any other year because I couldn't move very well. <laughs> you, that is you still. To... <laughs> <laughs> and what what about it, Eric? You know, I mean, just what a what a what a buck. Yeah. You know, what a buck. Just had a front come through, so it's gonna get down. Kind of cool. The next few days, down to the mid 40s. Maybe we'll see. The first deer to show up this afternoon is a young buck that is known to hang out with the big buck we call Eric. We're thinking this just may happen.
With the sun setting and the camera quickly losing enough light to video, Johnny turns to me and lets me know that he's just about out of camera light. But before he can turn the camera off, something catches his eye. And it's Eric. He's come back looking for the deer that he's been hearing. What is so impressive is, is the mass of this deer. I mean, I can get my, I, I cannot get my hands right around there. Look at that. <laughs> He's a four by five, but as an eight point, that is a man. Look at this buck. And you see him good with your light? That is a massive. Look at that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to fall in love with bow hunting and experience this. And, and this is what people who love to bow hunt love so much about it, is finally getting close to a mature whitetail like this. What a beautiful, beautiful buck. Of course, we had the double main beam buck that, that was probably one of the highest scoring deer ever if we'd have shot it. And we elected to pass it that year, thought it needed to be a year older. And y'all found, yeah, you had one side of the shed and found the other one yesterday duck hunting. Yes, yeah, sure did. What, two years? Two, two years year, later? Two years. He shed the horns two years ago and the deer disappeared and we don't know what happened to him, but he had double main beams on both sides, was over 200 inch deer. And I kept trying to judge him and we, we I passed him up several times and I think he was three and a half. And he's going to score somewhere between 206 and 210? Yeah. and That's I, incredible for anywhere, but in Mississippi. Let me go get them sheds. All right, right, go get them. Too pretty not to look at. Look at that right there. That one got chewed on pretty good, but we just found, we just found that side. We found that side that, that year, right there, that early spring. And we looked everywhere for that shed, and it was across the water and on a ridge out in the duck hole. We were driving out, Will said, that's double main beam, the other shed right there. That's and crazy. No and you know, the, the weight of these things is, is something. Yeah. You, got to, you, got to be, you got to be thinking about the possibility of, of taking this and fixing it. I commend you for sticking to your, your, your you ideas know, it's on like, growing big deer, though. Cause I that mean, because if you don't do it, you know, you know, and I, I, we, we, got a, we got noticed that a guy a mile from here killed one of our big palmated deer just last week. And he left following the doe probably, but that's okay. He was a 160 to 170 deer in the 160s. It's like the turkeys. You know, we started them, we protected them, we didn't hunt them for six years, and they are spreading and it, whole area. it's rewarding. You know, the whole, everybody gets to enjoy it. Just don't shoot them off the roost and don't shoot them out of season and don't shoot them during deer season with a rifle. <laughs> <laughs> And everybody can enjoy And everybody them. can enjoy them. Golly, these duck pictures in here and all these ducks lined up. Just keep and all looking. these big grins. Mm -hmm. Oh, goodness. It seemed like yesterday they were, they were working this, because the water's lower in here than it was in. And, so, and 
Man, you can look how muddy it is where they were in here last night. That is great. I don't That's think they'll sign. see us for for a change. No, they ain't, they ain't gonna see us. got a good setup. You can shoot right there, Will. You want me right here? Uh huh. Eric, where you gonna get? On the left, I guess. Yeah, we got Eric on the left because he's left handed. I got, the I got your bag right here. Hey, hey, Eric, I got the wheel string in here. Let me show me that wheel string, how it works. Let me show you how that wheel string works. The wheel string? Yeah. Rock, can you hear that? Everybody who duck hunts knows what this is. But instead of calling it a jerk string, we call it a wheel string. Y'all something else. I can't believe what y'all are. <laughs> Take it down and look what happens. Y'all are, 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 y'all Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Nick. Duck right here on the right, on the right. Cut your man. Reading it out front, right in front of Brad. Take him in. Get that low single right there. Take him in. Get him. Hey Brad, huh? that was a dang good shot. Isn't you right behind me. I know. I, I had a bale of hay on top. <laughs> Here comes Brad. Brad, get ready. <laughs> get him. Get that green head. That's sick. Guys. Oh, you heard Take. him get him? We get the green head too? I did. Excellent, Eric. Hey. I missed that green hey. head first. That yeah. was... Go shoot. Green head right above me, Brad. Got the one above me. Oh. Excellent! Yeah. Good shot. Good shot, Eric. Eric. It's all yours, Trent. Good shot, Eric. Good shot. Good follow up, Eric. Four of them low. <laughs> Get that green head, Will. Get him, Will. Get him, Will. Good shot. That's a wrap. That's unbelievable right there, guys. That's a wrap. That's what it's all about. And th these past few years, our winters come late. You know, it's not till January that you get this kind of wind and weather. God, but it's worth the wait. Oh, it's great. We just had us a very successful afternoon shoot. We're mighty proud. Very proud. Right, Troy? I'm past proud. Right, Brad? That's right. Closed captioning for the truth provided by Gold Tip Arrows. This segment of the truth is brought to you by Ozonix, Yeti, and Ceasefire. It really has been an incredible opportunity to be here and hunt here and to manage it and to kind of kind of finesse every little thing all year long to maximize the ducks and, and the deer. And then you end up with turkeys and quail and you know, you can, we've had a blast, but I thank y'all for being a part. Shoot, thank you for, for letting us be a part. I'm telling you, it, it's been special.
you know, I think about all the, the work that's gone into this place and the improvements, you know, that from when it, when Will, you first got it and where it is now. I mean, now there are turkeys here. There weren't turkeys before. There are quail here. There are no quail in Mississippi. And just the things you've done to the habitat and, and, and everything. Well, Mary and I decided to, to, uh, to sell the place. And so this will be our, our last opportunity to be here. It's been a great part of our lives, a great part of Primo's. Oh yeah. And we've had some incredible times here. And it, I get emotional about it, but you know, life goes on. And my life is changing, my parents are older, There's, I have different obligations, and so we decided to let, just uncomplicate things a little bit. So I, I, I look forward to seeing the, the new owner love it and cherish it as much as we did.